welcome to this video and in this video I wanted to just quickly go over what terrestrial planets are. What are they? What's the classification for making a planet as a terrestrial planet as opposed to something like a gas giant or something else like that? So these planets are, they're, they're compact and they're Earth-like. That's basically the gist of it really. They have a solid surface that you can stand on. So here you've got Mercury and Mars, they have a solid surface and they can be considered Earth-like in, in comparison to other planets that are nothing like Earth. Now, the density-wise, they are approximately twice the density of a typical rock, and that's because they're made of rocks and metals, and they will typically have like an iron core as well. So the heavier elements are going to be in the centre. That makes the overall density of the planet about twice that of um, rock. However, you have a look at the densities here. Mars, Venus, Mercury, they all have a fairly similar density, but Mars is a little bit less dense than the other ones. Now, size comparison, we've got Mercury on the left, and that's our smallest one, and then you have Mars, which is on the furthest right. That's the next smallest. And then Venus and Earth are actually fairly similar in size. So Venus is a little bit smaller than Earth, but Earth is the largest terrestrial planet that we have. Now, something that all of the terrestrial planets show evidence of, and actually planets in general will show evidence of this, is planetary differentiation. And what does that mean? Well, it means that they have like a layered structure. So during the formation process, they heat up, there's melting internally, and because of that, the heavier elements will essentially sink to the bottom, to the centre of the planet. So you get your heavier stuff there, like your iron core, and then you get lighter and lighter stuff as you get to the crust. Hey, so it's a little more complex than that, but basically that's what planetary differentiation means. You have this different layering of the materials inside the planet. Now, if you have a very small object like an asteroid, that isn't going to happen. They're not big enough, they don't get hot enough to then actually have that layered structure. They don't become differentiated. But as they get bigger and bigger, they do become differentiated. And it's not just planets that do have this, although all planets will show evidence of this. You can get minor planets, dwarf planets, even large asteroids can become differentiated where this occurs. But the terrestrial planets all show evidence of planetary differentiation. Now, the dynamic definition places them in the inner part of the solar system. So this is where the inner rocky terrestrial planets are. And then you have your outer gas giants further out. So the dynamic definition says that they're Earth-like as well as where they are, their orbits, things like that as well, not just their composition. But if you just purely want to go for the geophysical definition, the, the composition, the actual object themselves, then a lot of other objects in the solar system then become to be classified or could be classified as a terrestrial planet when in reality they're not necessarily. So things like the moon, some of Jupiter's moons even, could be classified as terrestrial planets because they meet that geophysical definition of being a terrestrial planet. So thank you for watching and if you enjoy then check out some of the other videos.